All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks again for joining us today for the Brackets for Good 2018 nonprofit orientation. We're thrilled to bring Fundraising Madness to 13 exciting markets across the country and introduce a lot of people to great causes in their local community and support and raise some great funds along the way. We do a couple house cleaning things. We are working on recording this, so we'll be able to kind of produce this and, and share it out with you at a later date. Um, we're going to do that on our YouTube channel, so if you're not following us on YouTube and you want to be alerted when this drops, please feel free to go to our YouTube channel at Brackets for Good and follow us there. We'll promote it socially as well, so you guys have access to it in the event that there's any other team members you would like to um, kind of tune in and be able to view what's going on here. Uh, questions. So if you have any questions within the Join Me Brackets for Good account, there is a chat bubble. You can message us your questions there. We'll certainly try to answer them all as we get toward the end of the presentation. And if not, we're going to provide you a number of different ways that you can get in contact with us. And we'd love to answer those questions one-on-one -on -one for you. So with that, let's jump into today's presentation. This is me, Matt Duncan, co-founder and deputy director of Brackets for Good. I always laugh when I see the word deputy. I feel like I should have a badge. Certainly not the case, but um, you know, being a founder, I can't tell you how grateful and thankful I am for your participation here with Brackets for Good. What we've created along the way definitely is a fundraiser, but it really is an awareness platform first. And the reason that we started Brackets for Good, uh, a lot of um, some creative elements went into it. There was obviously a little beer, a little pizza, and a little college basketball, and a lot of conversation around this Butler basketball team here in Indianapolis that we had seen go to back-to-back -to -back national championships and watching the city of Indianapolis discover or rediscover this university all over again. That energy and enthusiasm and excitement and really kind of watching everyone cheer for them and become a fan led us to consider how could we do something similar that we see in sports. We love sports. We love competition. How can we take something that we love and turn it around and do something good in our community? And our conversation was maybe we could create kind of like the office pick'em tournament, uh, much like happens every March. You fill out your college bracket, you donate some dollars. But what we wanted to do is take those dollars and give them back to organizations in the community. And uh, myself and the other Matt, two Matts, so hopefully you'll get to know us pretty well during this tournament run. Uh, we could only name a handful of organizations here, and the other Matt was a lifelong resident. Um, I had been a resident of Indianapolis since 2004, and we could only think of the organizations who could afford the billboards and the television commercials. And we, we started thinking as marketers, how do nonprofits that are smaller resource sized or even some of the mid-sized resource organizations be able to compete with these larger organizations that have deeper par pockets? And so that's why when we talk about Brackets for Good, it's really about awareness first and has some fundraising components to it, obviously, as well. Um, what we did want to do was to provide an opportunity for you to ask those donors to support you and receive dollars for that ask. Oftentimes, there's a different competitions out there that uh, require a click of a button, and we didn't want to rob an ask of a nonprofit. Um, from that type of activity when it's not necessarily going to generate dollars for them in the long run. So what we feel we have created and grown since 2012 is the only sport for nonprofits. And if you have a sport and you're based off of college, you got to have a mascot. So what you're looking at to the right is um, our, our mascot, Champ. He was created last year, and we call him the MVP or the Most Valuable Philanthropist. So you probably saw him during the countdown. You've probably seen him on our website, some of our communications out so far. Uh, but he's a really important part of our team, and he represents philanthropy as a whole. Our mission is to help introduce and encourage people to participate in philanthropy. And Champ is a representation of philanthropy across the board. So we're thrilled to have him. He is a real mascot. You might see him running around from time to time. And you're certainly going to see a lot of video coming from him in the coming days and promotions throughout the tournament. 
I'm not here by myself. I do have our front office manager, Rachel Proviance, who's joining us, and she's here to field some questions and kind of help me facilitate those um, as we get along during the presentation. So I know you've probably heard from her, but she's a rock star member of our team and thrilled to have her with us today. So um, 2017, let's talk about what the tournament looked like last year. Last year, we had 11 local community tournaments plus a national tournament. The tournament itself helped raise four nonprofits over $3.6 million during the five-week run of the tournament. 31.6% were from first-time ever givers to the organizations. So um, we always like to talk about awareness. Um, some of the awareness comes in new beneficiaries finding out about your organization that didn't know existed. Some of them come in the form of new donors as well. We do trend a little bit toward a younger audience in the donations. And as you might anticipate, they give smaller donor donation amounts, but they're giving in more frequency. So that's why that number is so significantly high. The other thing that I'd like to point out here is the nonprofit views, which is stat sheets. You'll hear us talk a lot about stat sheets. We call those speed dating for charities. And as you recall back to kind of the origination story, we needed to find a way to learn about organizations in our own backyard. What a stat sheet allows a visitor of bfg.org to do is to find out quickly what your organization is about and if their individual values align with the work that you are all doing to make the world a better place. Any organization that's on this current presentation has a live active stat sheet on bfg.org right now. The reason it's so important is not only about the nonprofit discovery, but it really is an opportunity for other people to learn about your organization. We've had people reach out to us throughout the summer since we published this, who've been doing research, who've been looking for other nonprofits to connect with, and they're using our stat sheets that are already there. So since you're registered, I'm gonna to continue to hammer this home. Please take action on that stat sheet and complete it. Fill it out to the best of your abilities and get creative with the content that you choose to share there. Another thing I wanna highlight is the 350 hours that nonprofits logged in training. That seems like a ton, and it certainly is. Each training session is under 10 minutes, but it's a quick snapshot and overview of how our tournaments work, the tools and resources that are provided to you to have success in brackets for good. What's also interesting is the organizations that went through the training experienced much better fundraising results as a whole. So please, please, please take some time, go through those quick training lessons, and learn about a little bit more about what the tournament's all about. Finally, mobile donations. The tournament is, uh, the, the site is mobile friendly. It's built in a responsive design. Uh, so if you have, and especially toward the end of the rounds, that heart beating, heart pounding excitement of last minute donations and people trying to get their donations in before the buzzer sounds, Mobile donations are huge in brackets for good. People can save their account information and with one click get in to donate, add their point totals, and check out with another click of a button. So mobile donations can become a real factor in deciding your advancement in brackets for good. So a lot of organizations is probably your first time. Some organizations we've heard in the past, it may have taken them the first week to really understand what this tournament's about. We don't want that happening to any of you. So this is a quick snapshot of what Brackets for Good is. This is an individual, nonprofit, single elimination fundraising tournament where your organization is competing against another. Individuals will come to bfg.org and score points for their favorite organization. We know that favorite organization is your nonprofit, so congratulations. And what we're talking about with points is one point equals one dollar donated on the site. The organization with the most points at the end of the round advances, the points reset to zero, and the fundraising continues. That fundraising continues all the way until the championship round, where one organization will walk away with a championship grant from our title sponsor in those local markets. Nonprofits, it's free for you guys to participate. You keep all the funds you raised regardless of how far you advance. It, all that said, yes, there will be one champion, but there are so many different ways that we've learned throughout the years that organizations have won, have taken lessons learned in this tournament, helped them in the weeks, months, and years to follow. 
So what we're going to spend some time on is diving into a few of those examples and talking about the tools and resources that are available to help you define that strategy. Here's a quick snapshot of one of the divisions. If you'll recall, there's four divisions in the college basketball tournament, much like there are in the Brackets for Good tournament. Our tournament used the survey results and information you've shared with us to group organizations of similar size into a division. What you're looking at here is one division of the tournament. There's 16 organizations competing. Their matchups are listed here and they're grouped together. So in week one, these organizations are raising funds. The funds that you see, or the point totals to the right, is the actual dollar amounts that these organizations have raised to date. There is a shot clock or a game clock that is ticking down. It indicates the days, the hours, minutes, as well as seconds left in the round. Buzzer beaters are a real thing. It's a feature in Brackets for Good, but it's also a strategy. The one thing that we always want to talk about is it's not a foolproof st strategy to win. Yes, you may need to put some late minute donations to ensure your victory, but any organization that's relying on those last second donations is nearly guaranteed to have that work sometimes and have it not work. So we've seen it win as many matchups as it has lost matchups. And if there's one thing we've learned over the years, it's much better to have organizations that are getting support from multiple supporters toward the end of a round than relying on a sing big, single big donation to help carry you on. All the donations and point totals are tabulated in real time. So upon the completion of every donation, you will see those point totals reflected in the tournament. So now let's talk about this element of success. What is your success? Again, one organization is walking away with the championship grant. There's a ton of ways that you can win this tournament and learn lessons along the way. And now we're going to talk about those. So marketing, um, and, and through the years, this is what we've learned from the organizations. Some organizations use this as an opportunity to experiment with their marketing, whether it's starting new channels, whether it's testing new segmentation, leveraging current donors. There's a ton of different opportunities that exist here to tell your story in a different way using the sports theme that allows a lot of exciting experiments to take place. First time donors, a conversation we hear a lot. We are very worried as a nonprofit organization who's out soliciting our donors, who has a lot of other campaigns that is now participating in the Brackets for Good campaign, are we going to end up running our ask into the ground amongst our donors? And the question here is, if that's the case, and that's how you feel, how can you leverage your current supporters to use their tribe? The tribe is their network of connections, family members, friends, coworkers, things like that that can help drive some new donors to your organization. One example I can share here is we had an organization that had that fear and used their local supporters to share with their audience why they support that nonprofit. That nonprofit raised $19,000 in first time ever donors. So there is a way to leverage your current community. If you haven't done this in the past, this could be a real opportunity for you to engage your audience in this type of uh, process. Board engagement. We hear from a lot of nonprofits that sometimes their boards are heavily engaged, other times they're not. What we've seen from the tournament from time to time is organizations be able to leverage the tournament and engage their board to get them involved. That board has brought their companies on board or their friends or again their tribe to help that, their cause advance in the tournament. Internal leadership development, this is one of those things where if you've identified an up-and-comer that's on the staff, that's you're looking for opportunities for them to um, lead more of a charge, this could be a great opportunity for them to take their de definition of success, define what that looks like, build a strategy, use the communication vehicles necessary, the marketing avenues at their disposal to help drive an opportunity for them to cut their teeth in a whole new way for your organization. Volunteer projects. Many of the organizations that participate in our tournament, some of them are completely volunteer ran. Others, like us, we're a staff of four. You leverage our volunteers in a real significant way to help us facilitate these tournaments across the country. 
So if you're looking for opportunities to engage volunteers, this can be an excellent chance to leverage their work, their expertise, uh, their motivation, their drive, their reason for joining and supporting your mission to help carry your organization in the tournament. Staff morale boost. This may seem weird, but we've heard this a couple of different ways. One was an organization who um, reached out to us and said, you know, I've been in fundraising for 14 years and thank you for putting this tournament on because it's reinvigorated my interest in my profession. And they said that because not only were they excited about the fundraising opportunity that existed for them, but they started following along with the other markets, the other tournaments. They were learning about what nonprofits were doing. They were getting really fired up and excited and energized for this industry that they chose to spend their profession in. These organizations across the country are tackling really tough causes, really tough missions, and they're doing it in a really fun and exciting way. And that kind of reinvigorated that individual to get excited again about her profession. Other opportunities that exist there, um, sometimes organizations get in the tournament and they have low expectations. They may say, let's try to raise $500 and see what we can do. Lo and behold, they start raising thousands of dollars. And then the staff's coming in strategizing, how do we stay in one more round? We're getting so close to that $10,000 and it totally changes the mood in the office. So there are certainly opportunities to do this for your organization. Corporate partnership development with the unveiling of community teammates, Maybe some opportunities to partner with organizations that you've gotten really close with but haven't been able to seal a deal. This can be a great way to facilitate that partnership or to cultivate one and further develop a, an existing partnership. We also see a lot of nonprofit collaboration happen through the tournaments. Organizations are learning about one another in their own market and finding opportunities to either create programs or fundraising opportunities or just other chances to develop one another's organizations beyond the tournament. So if you're looking for another chance to get deeper ties in the nonprofit community, Brackets for Good could be a great vehicle for you to do that. And peer-to-peer -peer competition. So this is one of the things that we know is really exciting about the tournament is organizations get fired up to see um, maybe they can go to, uh, which we've seen in the past, they go to one of their big donors. Their big donor says, this is a really cool opportunity. We're going to match donations up to $500, or we're going to match $10,000, whatever that may look like. There's an opportunity to add a match in. Other things that we've seen work really well is um, kind of highlighting or, or making really good via in, in VIP experiences. Maybe you reach out with exclusive offer to come to an event. Maybe you're um, limiting it to a handful of those supporters. You want to pull them closer and on the inside to your organization, creating war rooms to watch the end of the rounds. All of these things can be really powerful and draw deeper connections with those supporters. And now uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, how to execute some of the tactical elements of these strategies. So as you kind of work through what you think success can look like, and how do you kind of get to this point of what success will be, then you kind of take a step back and look at the different avenues that you have to, at your disposal that you know you're going to start to um, communicate with your audience. One of the things I want to talk about is through email, which is segmentation. There's a lot of us out there that don't want to attend the galas or don't want to receive mail or don't want to participate in something like a Brackets for Good tournament. So what's great with this opportunity is to start to hone in on maybe a key core group that can help drive some messaging, help drive some participation. Maybe they become the folks that you put on an inside roster that you communicate with about the tournament. And one of the things you can do is just share a little bit about the tournament and see who's up for helping your organization. That help could be promotional, could be financial, it could be both. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities there to engage your current base and by segmenting these groups off and maybe not uh, soliciting everybody that's on your list, this could be a great way to kind of target in and see if some of these different marketing or campaign or fundraising initiatives resonate with some of your supporters over others. One of the things I want to share real quick is uh, that we know that organizations have had success because they've keyed in on people that are very competitive, that love sport or people that like gambling, which sounds horrible for me to say. However, at the end of each round, there is a crazy amount of excitement that goes in toward 
beating the buzzer? And are you going to advance? That's thrill and excitement. Um, causes me to have withdrawals after the tournament is over, but it's incredible. It's very addictive, and I'm really excited for you all to experience it this March. Social. Uh, call it a necessary evil. Call it uh, a valuable tool for you. Whatever it is, this is maybe an opportunity for you to continue to enhance your audience Maybe draw some more participation from your audience by getting them to share some of your materials or encouraging them to share why they're supporting your organization. Uh, testing new platforms. Maybe this is an opportunity to connect with a whole new audience on a different platform that you've yet to kind of master and use. Maybe Brackets for Good is an opportunity for you to test there. Events. Events are huge in Brackets for Good tournaments. End of the round events have become a very important thing where organizations are able to pull people into their office or go to a community teammate's office. They've been able to raise funds through events and score those in bench points, which we'll get to later. Um, but there's a ton of opportunity here with events to pull people closer to your mission. Partnerships, we've talked about this before. Community teammates, it's great. We can't wait for you guys to partner up with a local company and have them help you in the tournament. Other partnerships that may exist that you can leverage, it could be uh, super volunteers that you have that have uh, fantastic graphic design capabilities or they're a marketing master, uh, reaching out to a marketing agency. There's a plenty of different opportunities here to maybe start a new partnership or further a partnership, whether that's a business one or one that can help you advance beyond the tournament. Press, if you have connections to local press, that's fantastic. It's a real opportunity for you to stand on your soapbox, talk about your organization, highlight how you guys are helping organizations uh, or those beneficiaries in your market. Um, there's a lot of different opportunities here. You can lean on our team as well. We do have local publicity agents that can help facilitate some of these uh, reach outs. But if you do have connections, this is a great time to leverage them, get some hard earned media for your organization and use it in a creative way. The phone, it's not just about phone calls anymore. As we know, text messaging is huge. And if you think about maybe pulling some people in, whether they're uh, your core supporters, their group that's maybe going out and cheering for you, adding a ton of different uh, social buzz, you can put them on a text group. You can have them opt in. You can send them updates on what's going on with the tournament, any sort of promotion that you have lined up for the week. This is an opportunity for you to leverage that ask and maybe connect with supporters in a new way. If you haven't leveraged text or made some of these personal phone calls, as we all know that thank you, even for a small donation, goes an extremely long way. So there's a ton of chance here within the tournament to continue to further those relationships. And mail, if this is something that um, you're you're accustomed to, your people are used to. Uh, we have a partnership this year with Peekaboo, which we're really excited about, but it's an announcement sharing with your supporters that you're in. It's a very easy to use opportunity, and it's a card program that's free for you to leverage and use. So really excited to share a little bit more there. Um, but if mail is something that your supporters respond well to, for now is the time to start building out what that strategy looks like. So let's talk real briefly about something that we're, um, we've touched on several times, but this is about your nonprofit locker room. This is about the tournament lessons that exist in training camp. So as you can see highlighted here, if you select the menu and you are logged in to your Brackets for Good account, you will see your name. Underneath that drop down menu option, you'll see home, donor profile, and underneath your donor profile, if you have access to the nonprofit locker room, you will see your nonprofit's name listed here. By selecting your nonprofit name, you will be taken into the nonprofit locker room, and training camps are the last menu option on the left hand side. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into that, but let's talk about this for a second. Let's put ourselves in the situation that I am a supporter of the Indiana Sports Corporation. Longtime supporter. I don't know that much about Brackets for Good. What you're looking at is an email that's highlighting uh, a graphic that's available to you that you can download in the nonprofit locker room, a short brief message, and a link to the matchup view. So I'm going to exit the PowerPoint presentation here and I'm going to jump into the current matchup. That if I selected that link, 
this is where I'm going to go. And if I'm someone who's not familiar with brackets for good, a matchup link is a great thing to share. I can sh see within that email that there is a competition going on and that I'm needed to get in and support a cause, my cause, the Indiana Sports Corp that I care about. Now I can see the clock ticking down. This is based off of a demo environment that we have. So none of this data is based off of 2016 information. But as I see here, I can tell that we're locked up in a matchup that we are currently down. So we need some help. I can see a basketball court. And if there's not too much context here, I can see which I may not understand, but I may see what percentage of points are scored. We call these layups, jumpers, and threes. But it's a breakdown of dollars donated from 1 to 99, from 100 to 299, and 300 and above. The point totals that you see here are live and time stamped when those donations come through. And maybe I have no clue what the children's, uh, the Indianapolis Children's Choir is all about, so I can select their stat sheet. Again, this is the stat sheet that is publicly available for every organization that's currently on this phone call. You will be able to see the highlighted mission, any sort of uh, program that they have, shared story. If they had volunteer needs, they would appear here, and any sort of funding needs, along with ability to embed video and contact information for how I would get in touch with this group. When the tournament is live, this visit button will turn into a donate now button. So it's very easy to make a contribution. I'll run real quick through what the donation process looks like. I'm ready to score points for the Sports Corp. I log in here, I add my $100, it asks me if I'm a first time ever giver, and the system is smart enough to not ask this if I had given before. So if I was logged into my account and had donated to the Indiana Sports Corp, this option would not even appear. I wanna give them a go team message because I'm on their, their roster. I can add a free throw code, which we'll talk about later. Um, but now you can see my total donation over here and it's time for me to continue to check out. Here I have an option. If I have an account, I can log in at this point. If I do not have an account and I wanna check out as a guest, I can select this process which is as simple as adding in my credit card information and some basic account information for me for tax purposes. Brackets for Good is a 501c3 and we handle the tax receipts immediately upon checkout. And if I wanted to, from this stage, I could create my own account right here just by selecting this button. My next step would be to click and review my donation and then have my points hit the board. So you may be asking, okay, I see how that process works, but I thought there was a bracket set up. And there certainly is. This bracket is the, the Indianapolis bracket in our demo environment. It highlights, uh, as it loads here, the, the different matchups that exist. So this is gonna be a view that you'll get very familiar with. To get to the matchup view, um, you just select these icons here, and it will take you right back into the section where we were at, but as uh, the whole tournament is is being represented here. So back to the bracket. This is how it looks. This is how it's going to work when the tournament's live, and um, you'll all get very familiar with the views. Next thing I wanted to share is what information would be shared with the nonprofit organization. So this is the donor profile. There's some information here which is old. This is going to get redone. And also, if you haven't signed up for the National Pep Rally, I highly encourage you to do so. We've got some really exciting announcements coming, some of it relating to what we're showing you today. So as we scroll through, all the information that you see here from my basic contact information on to my address and some demographic information about me as a donor would all be provided to you as a nonprofit to every donor that chooses to share their information with you. So that's all available in the nonprofit locker room and to run through what is available there, I wanted to jump in to the locker room to show you all the resources that exist and how you can take advantage of them today. Here we are in our test locker room, so there's some things that we don't have access to, but um, you do have access to or will have access to. Some of that is donor information, which donor summary information will be highlighted here. But again, if you go to export that information, 
all those fields that we just covered in the donor profile would be available in an XLS file. So the navigation on the nonprofit locker room groups things together in a pretty logical order. Here you can see under setup and support, there's roster, stat sheet, the donation widget setup, bank account information, and FAQs. The roster section is where you add additional team members to manage your Brackets for Good account. It's as simple as adding in an email address and sending an invite. That individual will need to create a Brackets for Good account, and then once selecting that unique link that they have sent, it will link their account, their personal account, with your nonprofit account. Things to note here, if you do not want an individual to have access to donor information or any of the other information that you see here, do not send them an invite. They will have access to all the information in the locker room. So it's very important that you only invite those that you really need to have access to this information. The stat sheet, which we've talked about several times, here is a quick view of the stat sheet. If you want to know what it looks like to the public, you can select that button. And now you can see what our, um, what our stat sheet looks like to those people landing on Brackets for Good. Below you can see suggested donation amounts. So examples here are maybe $100 um, feeds 400 people or $25 fills five backpacks for a child. Whatever cause uh, donation amount you might have, feel free to add there. Under this, you see contact information. So this is basic information about our organization. We can add in people and the number of part-time or full-time active volunteers we have. Your brackets for good presence. This is what it's going to be displayed on the tournament itself. As you can see, it's listed. It's limited to 25 characters, and you do have the ability to upload a logo here, which will change the logo of the bracket presence itself. Your mission statement, the highlighted program, all of these sections are in the stat sheet that we've covered. And once you get to the very bottom, you can save that information will update in real time. So again, please come to your stat sheet and add some information in here about your cause so more individuals can learn about your organization and what you're doing to make the world a better place. Another thing I wanted to highlight is your team color and logo. So you can upload your logo and select a team color that will appear on the bracket in the matchup view. It's important that you do that so that way organizations, individuals can find your organization if they're familiar with your logo and the team color will separate your cause from others in the tournament. Quickly, the donation widget is an embeddable link, this embeddable code that you can um, place on your website. And so during the tournament, when the tournament is live, it will show the game clock as it's counting down to the end of the round, the current matchup that you are in, along with both organization scores and point totals. Individuals can make a donation by using this donation widget on your website and never visiting bfg.org. Another way for you to add easy donation access to your cause in the Brackets for Good tournament. Bank account information, pretty self-explanatory. There is a deadline by the start of the tournament on March 2nd to get this bank account information uploaded. Excuse me. As you can see, it's routing account information and bank number. Once that information is saved, as you see here, it's indicating that it has been submitted successfully and it dates it. So you won't have any important information exposed. It's all going to be hidden. FAQs and help. So this is pertaining to the nonprofit locker room itself. There's a lot of changes coming and a lot of information we need to update. We will be doing that very actively and soon as possible. So this information is very important for you as you're navigating the nonprofit locker room. Donations. This is where your donation report exists. So that XLS file that we were talking about, we don't have information in here, but this is where it would exist. Bench points, this is a feature that allows you to host events, raise funds offline, document those funds, and have them scored in brackets for good. You're essentially collecting dollars, adding the point totals in, putting them on a nonprofit card, describing how those funds were raised, documenting them with an image, of how, whether it's checks, cash, the event itself, how these dollars came through, and submitting them for approval. There's a 24-hour approval process, and once that 24 hours has been 
has expired, those points will hit the board. What's important to note here is the deadline. These cannot be scheduled to hit at the very end of the round. The very last time that you can schedule these is 24 hours before the end of the current round. <clears throat> I'm sorry, at noon, 24 hours before the end of the round. So there is going to be a rebuttal period where your competition can see what dollars have come through bench points and respond. Moving on into the playbook, this section is an area that we are redoing at the moment, so it's currently under construction, but the playbook is your marketing and um, messaging resource center. Emails and social posts are being divided up amongst three audiences, your internal staff, your supporters, and your board. And there's also three different time durations that the content is search searchable as well. Pre-tournament, during tournament, and post-tournament. So if you filter based on the audience and the time frame, you can get right to the message that you want to send. What is also great about this new feature is it has unique donation links to your matchups already built into the content. It can't get much easier than copying and pasting if you're short on time, or if you need some inspiration, leverage this content to help you further your mission in the tournament. Featured partners are just that. They're organizations we partner with that are offering you an opportunity to engage with them. Please go there and check out the different opportunities that exist. Logos and graphics, this is already available to you. You can download any of these images and start to use them in your marketing outreach. There's email banners, there's champ graphics that you can add your own logo and put cheering messages in. Whatever you want to use these for, they're greenlit for your use. Referral links, this is a very advanced feature that there's a training lesson on. This is a way to think of ma uh, ma mapping your effectiveness, effectiveness of your communication channels, whether it's through email, social, putting people on different teams. You can assign a link, any sort of uh, name that you want or label that you want, and when used, it will track the number of clicks users created the total number of donations and the total dollars raised during the tournament. So it's a fantastic opportunity to kind of test some new uh, avenues and determine your effectiveness on certain channels. Training camp, tournament lessons, this is the section you need to pay attention to. There's a lot of great information in here. Again, none of these sessions last more than 10 minutes. They're short, consumable. They give you the very basics into the more advanced opportunities that exist to help you advance your organization in brackets for good. Finally, donation links. These links are not going to be live until the matchups go live. So you have a direct donation link. Think of that as putting your nonprofit in the individual's cart to check out. It's perfect for those people that say, hey, I want to give to you. I'm not really sure how to do it. You send them this direct donation link. All they have to do is add the number of dollars they want to contribute and check out. Current matchup view, which we shared in that example earlier, and the tournament matchup itself, which goes to the whole market. That's the quick snapshot of the nonprofit locker room, and now it's time to go back in and highlight a couple more features that we want to discuss that are available in Brackets for Good tournaments. One is buzzer beaters. So in the demo environment, we didn't have the ability to show this, but this is the scenario at hand. An organization, Domestic Violence Network, has a donor that's donating $100 to their cause. They've turned on buzzer beaters, as you see here below, and what buzzer beaters does is add an additional $100, so their total donation to the Domestic Violence Network is $200. Once this donation is complete, $100 of this transaction will hit the board immediately. The other $100 will be the last point total scored for the Domestic Violence Network to help them advance. So there's no chance to re rebuttal, and these amounts you will see in the nonprofit locker room, you'll see a total number of buzzer beaters. But just like a buzzer beater, you won't know if it's going to go in or hit the front end of the rim, you won't know the total amount of dollars within those buzzer beaters. The donation receipts, as we mentioned, we are a nonprofit ourselves. Every donation is realized as a donation to Brackets for Good first. We provide the individual with the name of the nonprofit and the total donation amount in their tax receipt. 
If they have an account, they can come back and download it whenever they want. If they do not, they can add their email address into a new uh, to a new feature that will automatically send them their tax receipts. This is the quick snapshot of what that donor information would look like had it been available in the in the demo environment. You can export this just by clicking this button, the XLS file, so you can use any donor management software that you may leverage today. Free throws. As we mentioned earlier and you saw in the donation process, we're overhauling this program. Last year, it was, it was a very valuable thing, and the way to think about free throws is real money that's put up by either Brackets for Good or our sponsors to help your organizations. We want to attract new people to give to your cause. So the different ways that an individual can receive free throws is by interacting with our sponsors, by learning about nonprofits through their stat sheets, and by sharing their participation with others or their tribe. What you see to the left is the updated process that's coming. So now if I have free throws available because of actions I've taken, I can add in my own point totals or add my two points that you see here that are available to make a donation to an organization that I choose. So we're making this process even easier to redeem, and it's much more intuitive than it was in years past. Community teammates. This is very exciting because it was tested in Indianapolis with fantastic results in 2017. Right now, Community Teammates allows a participating nonprofit to partner with a local company. As you can see, there is some brand visibility for those community teammates, those companies that choose to partner with a nonprofit. What's fantastic about this opportunity is we very soon will have a playbook in the playbook section of the nonprofit locker room, a section called Community Teammates. Here, you will have one sheet information that you can pass on to those interested, templates that you can use to solicit either existing partners or brand new partners that you would like to partner with that you can use on an ongoing basis or adjust as you see fit. You can also add the community teammate into your uh, community teammate section and we'll update their logo, add in their name, and send them an email that provides them access to the community teammate locker room where they have resources and ideas that can help them promote your cause in Brackets for Good 2018. What is also being revamped is the landing pages for each market. If you think of someone landing at bfg.org and they may want to donate, this is going to be the page that they see. What's exciting here is that if you're familiar with Netflix, this is going to mirror a lot of that experience. The tournaments, as you see, the tournament totals are set up in tiles, and you have the ability to customize your own view. If you know what nonprofit or what market you want to follow, you can favorite these nonprofits, and they will appear below in your fa My Favorite section. Another element that I said or shared a little earlier is if uh, someone lands here and wants to donate, we'll have large call-out donate buttons that when selected, an individual can search by typing your nonprofit name in, or they can go to the advanced search, which allows them to drill into cities, into service areas provided, where the nonprofit is headquartered. This section is all about the different cause categories that they can follow. And the more section even gets down into the operating budget and size of staff. This has never been done before in the nonprofit space, and we're thrilled to be able to elevate our search features to help people discover and participate in philanthropy. A partner that you might have seen in the nonprofit locker room is CRF. What they're doing and helping us this year is if an individual can't or is having trouble or does not want to donate online, they can donate over the phone to your organization. We're trying to make as many opportunities as possible for you to raise the most funds. Phone donations are only available from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's not going to change throughout the tournament, so you need to know those kind of dates moving into it, or those time frames moving into it, the tournament. Next up is the convenience fee. There is a difference in convenience fee from web donations to phone donations. For the last four years, our web donation total 
processing fee of credit cards included has been 4.7% plus 30 cents. The phone donation hasn't increased as it is an outside vendor and there is additional resources required to process those transactions. Phone donations are at 7% plus 30 cents. All of this information on the fees and everything else pertaining to Brackets for Good, you can read up on in our terms. If you need access to it, we're happy to share it with you, but we want to make sure that you understand the difference between these two processing fees. We mentioned it earlier, Peekaboo. This is how easy it is. This is the interface at Peekaboo and what we're about to unveil to all organizations participating in Brackets for Good. Drag and drop your logo in on Champ and the, the circular bubble to the right, and you will be able to print these cards and have them distributed to those supporters that like to receive mail from you. An incredible opportunity, and it's at no cost to you. We're thrilled to be able to partner with Peekaboo for this opportunity. Once again, it's kind of beating a dead horse here, but this is <laughs> all about training camp and getting into those tournament lessons. Please get in there and learn about or the different tools and resources that are available. And the final thing that we wanted to touch on here uh, that's very important is obviously the tournament schedule. For most tournaments, the tournament will start on March 2nd at 8 p.m. local time. Other, other tournaments where we weren't where there are 32 or under 32 participating organizations in the tournament, those tournaments begin on March 9th. So you want to make sure that you go to your local market and view the registered nonprofits. Count up all the organizations that have a tournament logo next to them, and you will know if it's over 32 that your tournament starts on the 2nd. If it's under 32, your tournament starts on the 9th. <clears throat> Rounds end at 7.59, p.m., and rounds one through four last one week in, dur in, chat in duration. <clears throat> the championship and philanthropic four rounds, so round five and round six, are cut in half. So on March 30th at 8 p.m. to April 3rd at 8 p.m. will be the semifinal round. And the championship round will be from Tuesday at 8 p.m. to Friday, April 6th at 8 p.m. At the end of each round, there is a confirmation period where we check scores, ensure that every score was legitimately accounted for, and then we advance the tournament on to the next round. Two other things that we wanted to highlight here. If you haven't registered for the National Pep Rally, please do so. It's in Indianapolis. We will be streaming it live. You can get to that stream by visiting bfg.org or our YouTube channel. We're covering a lot of new and exciting enhancements that are we didn't cover today for 2018's tournament. Another orientation is coming up on February 22nd. If you have other team members that you would like to attend, you can certainly encourage them to register. Again, we will be recording and publishing this very soon. So you can also share that out with any team members that you would like to view or uh, learn about some of these things that we talked about today. And finally, Brackets for Good wouldn't exist without great nonprofits like you all. You are a part of our team, and we are a part of your team. That's how we've always envisioned our organization. So without you guys, we don't have an organization at all. We want to see you have success in this tournament however you define it. If that means new donors, if it means winning the tournament as a whole, if it means testing new technology, whatever that looks like, we want to be here to support your efforts. We want you to raise money. All of our sponsors that we spend so much time working with to help us put on these tournaments want to support great causes in the community just like yours. They're interested in watching you raise money, and they're even more interested in hearing your stories of success whether that's acquiring new donors, whether it's engaging your board, boosting morale, whatever that may look like, they're eager to see you guys have success and elevate your organization beyond the tournament. All that said, we're here to help. Please reach us via email. You can live chat us at bfg.org. We can be reached by phone. And we're even available for one-on-one -on -one sessions. If you have gone through all the training, looked at all the materials, developed a strategy, want to pick our brains a little bit more, ask a few clarifying questions on your strategy itself, give us a shout. 
We're here to see you all have success in Brackets for Good. I know we've had a ton of questions. <laughs> so um, now I want to see if we can answer a few of those questions before we wrap in the next eight minutes. So um, Matt McIntyre, our executive director, has actually been in there. He's a viewer 102. So he's been the one who's been answering most of your questions. So he's a pro BFG. -er. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, so we do want to hit on a couple of extra things that have been coming across Let's do it. more often. Um, the first option or the first question that's been coming across several times is, can you have more than one community teammate? And mm. absolutely. Um, we envision this opportunity is one partner for the entire tournament. But if you want to have more than one, bring it on. <laughs> we would love, we would love to see, um, multiple partnerships and relationships formed because of your participation in Brackets for Good. But we only have room and marketing room for one partner. Correct. There's one logo, or there's room for one logo on your stat sheet, Correct. but you could upload a different logo each week if that's you how you want to go about it. Absolutely. Um, next, we do want to give a couple more examples and expand a little bit more on bench points and buzzer beaters. Good, um, good, good. So... I'll give a little more example on bench points. Um, if you so this came through the chat window. Um, if you hold an offline um, fundraiser like a bake sale, or if someone comes to your office to give you a check, or if someone donates to you through your own website saying this is for brackets for good, that counts as bench points. Um, anything that doesn't come through bfg.org, but is for brackets your brackets for good participation. That is bench points. Um, we need to document yeah. those. So yes. I think the important part about bench points are and how we've really seen them play out. There's been organizations that have community centers that have kitchens that have ran really creative um, fundraising opportunities that they kind of played off of. Uh, um, the Food Network's Chopped show, where they pulled local celebrities in, called a police chief or a fire chief, uh, school superintendent, and had them cook and and make uh, make food for the others in attendance, and people donated dollars for the winners. So really exciting opportunity to get people closer to your mission. We've even seen people pass buckets around their corporate sponsors and receive cash from checks or, or I mean, uh, dollars or uh, change. So those things exist, and we want to certainly open those opportunities up. And I, th I think I saw something about T-shirts in there. Um, T-shirts, absolutely. The, the big deal is, in the terms, all the funds cannot be raised until March 2nd. So you kind of have to take that into consideration. Certainly nothing stopping you from building up the interest and um, hopefully being able to get a bunch of sales starting the March 2nd so you can make those donations into the tournament. But you got to take it in a, in a, into account the timing. Buzzer beaters, um, other examples. <clears throat> so I don't really have too many other examples. <laughs> it's it's a standard feature that basically allows you to schedule a second second equal donation amount that's scored at the very end of the round. So um, another kind of push, another drive from your donors that can help them advance um, advance onto the next round. And we've seen. And you will see tons of buzzer beaters come in. So if you're in a new market, I highly recommend you encouraging your donors, if they can can contribute to that way, uh, doing so, because it will certainly help push your organization over the edge. What else do we got, Rachel? Um, let's look at this question about the as our additional prize money for winning each round. That's a great question, and currently there is not additional prize money for advancing each round. It is only available to the final winner. Um, this next one that just came through, they're looking for the current matchups. Um, we're going to keep you hanging on to your seats for a little bit longer. Um, we're not going to release the first round matchups until the pep rally. So that's going to be February, or the national pep rally, excuse me. That's right. Um, that'll be on February 15th. So make sure, and if you're watching, um, if you're going to be live streaming with us, or if you're going to be at the pep rally, if you're local, um, Make sure to double check and or check back at the website at that point to find who your first round matchup is. 
That's right. That's right. That's correct. So this question that just came through, only um, events or fundraisers that happen after March 2nd count for bench points. Um, that's absolutely correct. Um, only You can only start fundraising after the 2nd. Um, any funds that come in before March 2nd will not count for bench points. It won't count on the site. Um, you cannot start fundraising until your tournament begins. That's right. That's right. Um and if if you need a refresher on that, all of that is detailed in the terms at um, bfg.org slash terms. So you can review that information. It's also part of submitting your participation in the tournament as well. So you've seen them a couple of times, but I know that they can be kind of long and cumbersome. But uh, anything on the fee structure, anything dictating when you can start raising funds is detailed there. Uh, well, um, I think we pretty much answered most of the questions that yes. we're getting. Uh, if you have additional questions, please feel free to pepper them in. Um, we'll stay, we'll keep kind of the screen share live for a while and answer a couple more. Um, but right now we're going to go ahead and wind down. Um, we want to just thank you all so much uh, for joining us. It's been great to have you guys spend an hour with us to learn a little bit more about Brackets for Good. As we've mentioned throughout this, we're here to help you. We want to help you have success in this tournament, however you define it. And we're standing by to assist. So thanks for being a part of the Brackets for Good team. Let's have an amazing 2018 tournament, and let's raise a ton of money for your organizations. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>